This is Crescent Hall Workhouse. My name is Detective Lightfoot and I have a murder to investigate. Mr Richard Barker's death has proved most intriguing. We have interviewed five suspects in our attempt to discover who committed the deed. There are two more we must speak with before we can begin to draw the threads together. As ever, pay close attention and make sure you record anything of interest. I crossed the courtyard to the porter's lodge one more time. I found the door half open and heard sounds of snoring. What? What? Oh, it's you, Detective. Can't blame me for having a little rest. There'll be all sorts of comings and goings, and I have to open the blasting gate for all of them. I asked Grieve what he meant by this. Well... There was, uh, you, first thing this morning. No offence, but things were odd last night. That Mrs Barker, she left at a uh, quarter to nine. Now, most of the uh, fairer sex usually do what they're told like they should, Detective. But I keep my distance from Mrs Barker. She's no one to cross. And last night, Lord love her, she had a face like thunder. I asked her if Mr. Barker would be with her. She replied, My husband will make his own way home, or he may go to the devil. And then, on the hour, just as the clock struck nine, Miss Bacon, the cook, up and left the place too. Why as a sheet she was? Well, she's a little slip of a girl anyway, wouldn't say boo to her goose. But I tell you, she said not a word. Looked as though... She had seen a ghost. And I have to put up with all of my usual duties as well. I have to watch the door, make sure all the poor people only enter if they have the right pieces of paper. I have to take the filthy clothes when they come in here and give them uniforms so everyone looks exactly the same. I've also got to make sure that they're bathed and have their filthy air cut off to stop the net spreading. And, and I have to keep order in this place. Ah, and they blame me just because I have an occasional little drink. <laughs> but perhaps I'm not the only one to have had uh, one drink too many, eh? I replied that I thought it must be difficult to keep order with so many poor people in the workhouse. You never said a truer word, Detective. Some people in this workhouse should not even be here. They're not right in the end. Harriet Keppel, she's the worst of them. When she goes mad, she is like a spitting farm cat. She shouldn't be here. Should be in the lunatic asylum in thought. But I don't know, Detective. It costs too much money to send people there, so here she stays. And my word, don't she hate the under-matron. Hides and jumps out on her wherever she can. Old Harriet drives the master to distraction. I'm not surprised he left the door to the men's ward open. But, uh, would you want the likes of Plowright wandering about? He don't like Mr. Barker, am I? Is he handy with a hammer? I retraced my steps across the courtyard, intending to meet with our last suspect, Elizabeth Bacon, the workhouse cook. I passed the master's office and heard the sounds of the kitchen beyond. I also heard voices. Goodbye, Edward. I shall... The cook saw me. Ah, uh, uh, yes, Mr. Scrivener. You need not worry. All will be well and the boys' dinner will be ready as usual. Mr. Scrivener hurriedly departed towards the boys' schoolroom. And as she busied herself about the kitchen, I asked the cook what she remembered of last night. The master came by just before half past eight to check all was well 
and I had to let him know then that I would be running late and did not think I would leave before nine o'clock. Ah, Miss Bacon, late as usual? Well, don't stay too late, will you? Mr. Barker is still working in the boardroom. <sighs> I'll begin to check the men's wards. Good evening to you. You see, Detective, sir, Sundays are very busy days for me. That's because the Guardians come for their weekly meetings, and I must provide them with a few refreshments. It is difficult to fit in with preparing three meals a day for all the inmates, sir. So yesterday evening, I was getting something for the Guardians, as usual. Mustn't be too fancy, of course. They are very careful not to spend the taxpayers' money, sir. That was on top of preparing the evening meal for the workhouse inmates, sir. Meat, pudding and vegetables for over 400 of them. You can imagine how long that takes, sir. Meat, pudding and vegetables for the workhouse inmates. That may sound a little too grand, sir, but Sunday is the exception, sir. The rest of the week, the inmates get bread three times a day. They also have gruel, that's a pint of thin, watery porridge, with their breakfast and cheese or butter at dinner and supper. The master assures me that this special diet has been developed in London. He said it had been proved that the white cast diet is just enough to keep a person alive. It's also cheap, sir, if I may speak plainly, which keeps the taxpayers happy. Of course, by the time I finished my duties, it was late, sir. The clock struck nine, just as I was crossing the courtyard to walk home. Had she seen anything at all unusual? When I left, sir, no, sir, nothing unusual. As I left, the porter, Mr. Grieve, was at his lodge, cursing and stinking to high heaven, as usual, if you pardon my boldness, sir. The master told me that Mr. Grieve was in front of the guardians yesterday, sir. One of the poor inmates made a complaint about him. They said Grieve had struck him about the face. And last night, Mr. Barker gave the porter his last and final warning. One more complaint, one more failure to do your job, and you will be out. Of course, Detective, when I arrived at the workhouse this morning, the first thing that I saw was his sneering face. Oh dear, oh dear. It grieves me to be the bearer of bad news, but I'm afraid the chairman's gone and done himself in. Oh my God. Goodness, sir, this is too awful. Where will it all end? I tried to calm Miss Bacon down and asked her how long she had been the workhouse cook. <clears throat> uh, um, I have been cook at the workhouse these uh, past six months, sir. Um, before that, I was staying with my parents in North Elmham. And before that, uh, I was in service. Uh, first as a kitchen maid and then as an undercook. Miss Bacon had work to do, and I had heard enough. I sent word to the master to ensure that all the suspects were gathered in the boardroom on the stroke of six o'clock. <laughs>